Shortcuts are the Loch Ness of the budding artist, constantly searching for them in the vain attempt that it may help them reach their goals, only to realise that there is no quick fix to getting better. And although there may not be a substitute for hard graft, there are some shortcuts that would at least allow you to use one of the most popular drawing software out there more efficiently. This list is not absolute, as not all shortcuts are made equally, but these are some of the ones I use most often. I'm Brinkley, and these are my top 10 Photoshop shortcuts for artists. Before I start this list, please consider hitting subscribe. I'm only little and I'm just getting on the treadmill that is YouTube and I'm told that subscribers are a good thing to have. Thanks. Number 10, B is for brush. I won't lie, these first few entries are pretty damn basic, but like with all of these shortcuts, you'll be amazed at what a difference a few seconds make when you're creating. The brush tool is the main heavyweight when it comes to drawing and painting on Photoshop and so you'll become intimately familiar with this one. Simply press B on your keyboard and gee willikers, it's there. This shortcut pairs quite nicely with F5, which brings up a selection of brushes as well as modifiers like shape dynamics for you to choose from. Number 9, E is for Eraser. You'll probably find yourself switching from brush to eraser quite often as you try and get your lines down perfectly or if you're filling in an area and need to erase the outside. This shortcut follows the same logic as the brush does as pressing E brings up the tool. Now you can get rid of your mistakes and pretend that they never happened. Number 8, L is for Lasso. Okay, you're probably seeing a pattern here. This shortcut continues the theme of the previous two as you need to press L to get to lasso. The lasso tool is probably the most versatile selection tool at your disposal as it allows you to make custom selections that are controlled entirely by you. The lasso tool has some additional shortcuts to make it even more versatile than its default selection capabilities. If you want to modify your selection, press and hold the Alt key while you're using the lasso tool and you'll be able to subtract from your selection. If you want to add to it, then press and hold the Shift key to add to your selection. Easy. This is especially useful for comic artists who want to flat a page or if you only want to influence one part of your artwork. Speaking of flatting a page, secret bonus entry, the connoisseur's lasso. When I refer to the lasso tool, I'm referring to the default freehand lasso tool. However, the lasso tool has two cousins, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. I don't use the magnetic lasso tool, so I won't be referring to it in this list. I do, however, use the polygonal lasso tool. This allows you to create selections by selecting points on the canvas. This can give you a bit more precision when making selections, which is great, but is there a way of using both the freehand lasso tool and polygonal lasso tool at the same time? Good question, thanks for asking, because there is. Just follow these steps. Step 1. Begin to make a selection with the lasso tool. Step 2. While making your selection, press and hold Alt. The icon will change to the polygonal lasso tool. Step 3. Release your selection while holding Alt and you'll be able to make selections using the point-to-point -point polygonal lasso tool. Step 4. To go back to freehand, simply hold your pen to the canvas and move and it will automatically go to freehand. You can hold Alt the entire time if you want, so that you don't need to worry too much about releasing your pen from the tablet and closing the selection before you're ready. This may take a while, but with practice you can get it down quickly. Number 7. Space is for... Pan. Okay, so the logic of the shortcut breaks down a little bit here. Panning basically means moving and refers to the way that cameras move. In this context, it refers to how you'll be moving your viewport across the canvas. This shortcut works when you're zoomed in on your canvas and allows you to move it without the need to zoom back out again. Just press and hold the space bar on your keyboard and then click and drag on your canvas to move it to the desired location. This is ideal for detail work, as you can keep focused on the area in question without becoming disorientated by the constant zooming in and out. Just make sure you hit spacebar before you move your pen, where it won't work and you'll end up using the tool you have selected unintentionally. Number 6. Resize your brush with square brackets. The square brackets are in between the P key and the Enter key on your keyboard. Using one will increase the size of your brush and the other will decrease it in size. I'll let you figure out which one is which. Pressing and holding these keys will increase it more quickly and smoothly, whereas pressing it once will increase it incrementally. If numbers interest you, then the brush will increase or decrease by 5 up to 50, then by 10 up to 100, and then 25 up to 200, and so on. This shortcut can also be paired with the shift key to increase or decrease the hardness of your brush. The same logic applies, although there are only 4 increments with this one. Press and hold shift and then press a bracket key and it will increase or decrease the hardness of your brush by 25% at a time. Number 5. X Switch Photoshop has two colour swatches in the bottom left corner of the screen. The colour on top is the foreground colour and the colour underneath is the background colour. 
You can press the little arrows above these to switch between the two like a fool or you can press X on the keyboard to switch them whenever you need to. Number four, Alt for eyedropper. The eyedropper tool is used to sample a color on your screen. This will sample any color that is there, whether it's from a photo or your own artwork. It's incredibly useful if you want to grab a color that you were previously working with. To do this, press and hold the Alt key while using the brush tool and you'll switch to the eyedropper. With the eyedropper in use, click the color that you want to grab and then release Alt. You'll go right back to the brush tool. This is very useful when building up several tones in a painting as you can mix your paints and then sample the colors directly off the canvas. The alternative is to paint a bit, then move away from what you were doing to select the color and then come back. I don't know about you, but if I did this, then I'd have forgotten what color I was looking for, or I'd get lost on the canvas, sweating as I wasted the precious seconds that are ticking away from us all, life slipping away from our grasp as we stare death in the face and ask ourselves, why now? Wow, that got a bit intense. So yes, press and hold Alt for the eyedropper tool. Moving on. Number three, Control plus Shift plus N makes a new layer. Yes, you can click the little button that instantly makes a new layer. Yes, a lot of artists use this even though they know the shortcut already. But this particular shortcut gives you so much more than simply a new layer. By pressing Ctrl and Shift and N, you'll open up a dialog box that will enable you to name the layer. You can also color the layer, apply a different mode like multiply or affect the opacity of that layer. The possibilities are endless. Okay, so it's not that exciting and I don't mess with these options either. But I do use the shortcut a lot because I don't like to click things. And now you don't have to either. Number two, Control plus D, D selects. This one is a little bit obscure and it's a shortcut I wasn't aware of for a long time, but I was surprised with how often I used it. You may be able to make some fancy selections with the lasso tool, but what about when you're finished with it? Do you go up to the top of the program, hit select and go down to deselect? You'd have to be mad to do that, surely. So instead, you're gonna hit Control and D. I will give Photoshop some credit here, as it actually shows you what a lot of these shortcuts are in these drop down menus, so have a look for yourself. This shortcut pairs quite nicely with Ctrl and H, which hides the selection outline that you've made but maintains the selection. Those little ants that make up the selection can get quite annoying sometimes, especially as they can obscure small areas of your artwork. So Ctrl and H hides them and also unhides them as well, and to finish, just hit Ctrl and D. And number one, Ctrl and T transforms. So this one feels a little anticlimactic, but it's a versatile shortcut. If you hit Ctrl and T on your keyboard, then whichever layer you are on will be given a transform box. This will enable you to resize or rotate whatever is inside. If you want something specific, you'll need to make a specific selection first and then hit Ctrl and T. If you want to do more than resize or rotate, then right click on the canvas and you'll be given options to skew, warp, distort, among others. Once you're done with this shortcut, hit enter and Photoshop will spend however long it needs to make those adjustments. Be prepared to sit there for a while if you've got a big canvas, that's all I'm saying. And that's my list. Have I missed any shortcuts out there that you use as an artist? Let me know in the comments below. For a quick read, check out my website and see my blog where most of these videos are based on. The link is in the description. I've been Brinkley, have fun drawing, and I'll see you in the next video.